Hi everyone, today we're here to do a review of the new Skylar Contel ESV. This is the much anticipated release from Skylar, the second in their Quintel series in the English Standard Version. The first being the New American Standard. And uh, word is that Skylar is planning on releasing uh, all of the major translations in their Quintel line. This is their flagship Bible. We're going to be taking a look at the Firebrick Red Quintel today. And also, we're going to be taking a look at a new color from Skylar, which is this uh, dark green here. This is also the ESV Quintel. It's in a dark green. We're going to compare these two side by side. We'll compare them with the New American Standard version of the Quintel. We'll point out some similarities, point out some differences. I won't go into a detailed review of the uh, Quintel series because I cover that in my rather lengthy review of the New American Standard Quintel. And you can see the link up there on your screen. Go ahead and click it and um, you can uh, you can view that review and you can get the full details on the Quintel series but for today we're just going to be looking at these Bibles and what's different as well as um, some of the attributes uh, all around so we'll start with the exterior here the Bible is bound in a goat skin a rather nice goat skin I actually uh, really prefer the goat skin they used on the ESV version uh, compared to the New American Standard and I really don't know if they used a different um, type of goat skin. It feels different. Um, it looks a little different. And there is definitely a difference in the thickness. And I'll show you that a little bit later. So all of those things led me to believe that they used a different type of goat skin. I much prefer the look and feel of this one versus the one that I received on my New American Standard copy. The Bible is blind stamped, which is traditional Schuyler. As you can see there on the front cover, you've got the blind stamp of the Jerusalem cross. You also have the Jerusalem cross, which is the Schuyler logo uh, on the bottom of the spine here. And you've got the gold lettering all the way up with a few uh, indentations here for the ribs. The green version has the same basic idea, the blind stamp on the front um, with the gold lettering on the spine. The difference being the gold ribbons here are all three different colors of gold. As you can see here, you've got three different shades of gold, whereas on the red, you really have one color with this really nice, vibrant uh, cardinal red color. The Bible footprint is a little bit different than the New American Standard Version. The dimensions are six and an eighth by nine and an eighth by one and a half, <clears throat> excuse me one and a half maybe a little bit more than one and a half 1.6 inches um, whereas the um, quintel series in the new american standard was a little bit thicker and a little bit narrower um, in line it is leather lined um, we just recently found out that the leather lining that um, is used by Schuyler is a bonded leather. It is a high quality bonded leather called Finicel leather. Um, feels nice. It almost feels a little bit Cambridge-y, kind of the same idea that Cambridge uses in their leather liner. You've got that gloss look and it feels nice and tight uh, and smooth. In fact, I have here my ESV wide margin and I can give you an idea here by Cambridge. You can see that that glossiness um, is going to be very similar to kind of what skylar has been doing here. Not quite as glossy, but the feel is very similar on the Cambridge series. You're also going to get edge lining on the inside of the ESV Quintel. So you do see the edge line line here as I hold the Bible up. You can see the reinforcement on the spine. And this is a great feature for a, a big Bible. Uh, it really does help with durability. However, we're going to talk about the uh, edge lining a little later. Um, there is another component to it that, that is uh, kind of the flip side of the coin, if you will, for um, you know the edge lining on a Bible. There's a pro, and then there's also a con. We'll take a look at both of them. There's also a gilt line on the interior. Uh, this one's gold on the red version. It's also gold on the green. And as you can see, they do have uh, the stamp and goat skin leather cover with the gilt line all the way around. And the liner color for the red version is a really nice, uh, it's hard to explain, it's like a deep plum. It's not quite maroon, it's not quite brown. It's like a deep plum, almost leaning towards purple. 
I think it's a great compliment for the red exterior. A good choice by Skyler. If we look at the green here, uh, they went with a brown. It's a chocolatey, almost like a milk chocolate brown color. Mixed reviews from people on what they think of the brown with the green. Um, personally, I kind of I kind of like it. I think it works. Um, and as you can see there, you do have the same stamp, goat skin leather cover, and you have the nice gilt line going all the way around. Um, one thing you'll also notice about the ESV with the Yap is it does tend to kind of curve in a little bit. Um, I have heard from some reviewers that they don't feel like this particular version of, this, of the Quintel has any more Yap than the prior. I beg to differ. I know on the Evangelical Bible website they do call this a 9mm Yap. And granted, I didn't measure it, but just eyeballing it, it is, it is more than the Yap on the NASB version. Um, and it does have a nice curl in, so maybe it's an optical illusion with how it kind of it kind of curls and it makes it maybe look a little bit more than is actually there. I prefer it. I like this look a little bit better for this Bible. Let's talk a little bit about the interior. The interior here is obviously the high point of the Quintel line. Um, it's a 11 point Milo Serif font and it is printed on a very nice 38 GSM Tervikoski thin opaque paper and it's got an opacity rating of about 84%. Now I know that this is advertised as the most opaque in the industry and I'm going to reserve comment on that. Um, I will say this, it is opaque. It's very opaque paper, it's nice paper. It's some of the nicest we'll ha that we've seen in a long time from a publisher. Um, it is not necessarily a unique paper. I know Cambridge uses it in their, in their wide margin uh, series. Beautiful paper, great paper. Um, I, I think that for what they were looking to do with this, which is balance the legibility with the large font size with the thinner paper, I think it was a success. Because as you can see, um, they were able to, to uh, get the typeset just right to where um, you do have the two columns, you have the, re the references on the bottom, just like is uh, characteristic of the Quintel line. Um, and you do have the nice paper, which when compared to the new American Standard version of the Quintel, I, I, you really can't tell a difference. And there's supposedly uh, a seven GSM different rating. So without getting into the weeds on GSM, um, there is obviously a very, very big uh, following of uh, people who uh, subscribe to the theory that GSM is the only way or the primary way to rank uh, Bible paper opacity. And it's, it's not necessarily true. It does help, it's a good indicator. Um, but there's a lot more that goes into opacity such as the um, quality of the paper, the materials that are used in that paper um, the color I and mean, there's a lot there that uh, affects opacity so for all intents and purposes the paper in this is very nice um, I think that it fits the Bible well and I'm glad that they were able to uh, use a thinner paper in the ESV series than in the New American Standard series because uh, it did take away some of the thickness where the uh, the New American Standard was almost two inches thick the ESV is just over 1.5 the ESV Quintel is a black letter Bible, so all the words of Christ are in black. And it uh, it does have line matching. So uh, the line matching is done really well. I think that they lined it up very well. You can see uh, when you're reading the um, where you have a lot more of the white between the words, um, you can really line up the text on the other side of the page very well. And they did a great job with that. Um, line matching in a Bible is becoming more and more common and it's a great feature especially when uh, legibility and decrease in ghosting is one of your goals. The other thing that the ESV series did uh, in my opinion better than the New American series of the Quintel is they were able to get more characters per line. So the average character per line uh, meaning letters, spaces, Per line in the ESV Quintel is about 36. I actually went through and counted and did a quick average. It's about 36 average, whereas in the New American Standard it was about 33, maybe 34. So it doesn't sound like a lot, two or three characters, but it does make a difference. It does help with words not being cut off right in the middle of a word. Um, and so it makes reading a lot better. Uh, it's a better experience. 
So let's take a look a little bit at uh, comparison with the um, New American Standard. We've talked a little bit about it. Here's the New American Standard Quintel in blue. Um, and so you can kind of get a great visual here of the uh, fire brick red, the imperial blue, and the dark green. Again, dark green, a new color. Also, I will use this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, the two colors that were introduced new from Skylar with the ESV line, one of which is this dark green. The other one is an antique marble, which I heard is a beautiful color. I have not yet handled one, but um, I've heard that that is a very successful seller for them, and it's just a really nice, unique color. And then, of course, also they have the classic black. So some of the differences. Um, first and foremost, the ribbons. Uh, the ribbons to me appear to be the same material or the same type of ribbon, but the cuts are different. Um, the New American Standard that I had, uh, I received with a little bit of an angle cut. Both of the ESVs here have a square cut. Um, the last time I reviewed this, I nitpicked a little bit and said that I wish that they would have trimmed the ribbons better. I actually had to take a sharp pair of scissors to mine. I'm gonna bring it up again just because it's a high quality Bible and I wish they would have trimmed it just a little bit. I've got a lot of glue on the ends of these ribbons. I'm gonna take a, it's not a huge deal. You take a sharp pair of scissors and you can just trim them right down, but you can see it, it clumps, it grabs lint and just not very desirable. Be very careful when you're cutting your ribbons, but uh, you can take a scissor to them and just trim them up a little bit. The other piece is the leather is, in my opinion, uh, different, and it's also thicker. So I will do a side-by-side -side so that you uh, get an idea of what I'm talking about here. I'm going to try to do this and see how successful I am. But if you look at the side of the profile of these Bibles, um, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Just look at how thin the New American Standard uh, leather is compared to that green leather on the ESV. Um, it is a little bit thinner. I don't know if it's the liner. I don't know if it's the leather itself on the exterior or what, but it does to me seem like the ESV version is uh, uses thicker leather, which I much, much, much prefer. I like that thick leather feel. Um, and here's the yap I was talking about. So uh, the Bibles are pretty much even right now um, on how I've, I'm holding them. But if you look at the profile here, you can see that it does appear that the ESV version has a little bit more yap than the New American Standard version. So not just my imagination, it, uh, it does appear that it has more yap. The other difference is the ESV Quintel uses a little bit more red on the pages. So one of the cool features that I really like about the ESV Quintel is that they use this really unique color red on their pages. And they use it for the chapter numbers, they use it for the page numbers, um, and then they use it a little bit in the back of the Bible as well. But new, uh, they're using uh, the red in the concordance itself. So if you look here, you can see, I'm sorry, the, the cross-references, you can see in the cross-references that the numbers are using this new red, uh, this traditional red color. And also, if you go back to the back of the Bible, oh, there's one other place. You can see the separating line between the text and the cross-references, as well as the teeny, teeny little line uh, right underneath the word John there that separates the heading from the rest of the text is in red. But they use it one more place in the concordance. Um, as you can see here, you've got red words uh, and black definitions on the ESV series. Whereas on the New American Standard series, your concordance um, used only black for the main um, word itself. And the red, the only red that was used was for like the reference with the actual verses, but the, the word that you were looking up was black. So that's one new thing that was added to the uh, ESV line. Um, really, outside of the longer uh, ribbons and the square cut ribbons, outside of the little bit thicker leather, um, outside of the fact that they use a little bit more red on the pages and the characters per line count, um, it's it's pretty much the same Bible. It's the Quintel series. It's what you would expect from, uh, from Skylar. So here's my few small beefs, if you will, with this Bible. My, my only, you know, few concerns. Um, and it's some, nothing new. It's what we talked about last time with the New American Standard and what you've heard uh, Mark Bertram say as well. The Bible doesn't lay flat. So 
if you open it up to Genesis, you really can see here that um, you know there's there's some gap. Um, this one is actually laying flatter than some of the other ones that I've seen. Um, some of the other ones that I've seen were like that; they were kind of sticking straight up. So um, the uh, the reason for that is the way that this Bible is bound by young blood. They they use some materials, uh, the mole on the Bible. Um, that is uh, of a material that is not very flexible and th there's a reason for that um, and that's the the Bible is a thick Bible and they do want it to be as um, as strong as possible to make sure that it keeps and holds over time um, but um, you know there are some ways that that you can reduce this rigidity and still maintain that um, good integrity uh, structural integrity of the Bible it's been done by other manufacturers in the past and I think Skylar can do it and I, I'm really curious to see them try um, without belaboring the point I do want to give you an example this is a crossway uh, ESV single column reference from uh, 2008 and as you can see this one it lays flat in Genesis and it is also an edge lined Bible so uh, you know it, it's possible Here's an even older Bible. This is a 2002 Lockman single column reference. Uh, and this one is also a fairly new Bible. I have not used it much. And this one also has, if you can see here, the edge lining. It's a lot thicker edge line uh, than what is available in the Schuyler line. And this one also lays flat as well. So um, it can be done. I, I'm, not, I'm not nitpicking, obviously. Schuyler hasn't been around as long as some of these other publishers and so I think it's I think it's good that they're able to put out this quality of product um, it is considered one of the most expensive Bibles on the market um, it is definitely beautiful it's got uh, a lot of positives and I think it's come a long way since the new American uh, standard version so I'm curious to see what they do with the next uh, series I'm, I'm very curious to see what they do with the, the new King James um, if they continue to make these improvements I think the Quintel line will eventually be um, right up there with some of the uh, more classic Bibles in um, all around um, ranking. I mean, I think I, the only thing that's keeping this Bible right now in my mind um, below some of the other uh, fine Bibles out there is just that, that stiff binding that I've also heard can, can creak, even though I'm not seeing it in any of these two, so I didn't report on that. But um, overall, really nice Bible. I think that you won't be disappointed with any any one of the colors that uh, are, are currently available. Um, do look at the antique marble. I think that that's going to be a very successful seller for them. And uh, take a look at these two. I mean, just a really nice green, really nice red. Feels good, smells good, has a really nice texture. Um, Gotta say, uh, Skyler, good job. I think that you've uh, definitely improved it, and it's uh, it's a hit. I think uh, I think that that's clear by the sales and also the um, people who have reviewed it that seem to really enjoy this Bible. So um, that's the review of this. If you have any questions, please go ahead and comment below, and I'd be more than happy to get back to you. Um, and thank you very much for watching.